Hi guys, Nick from Hi-Fi Collective here. It's been a while, I hope you guys are good. Um, today we're gonna to be building a stepped attenuator, a shunt version. I know we've done a few of these before, but uh, we've managed to acquire quite a substantial number of switches that AudioNo used to use in their stepped attenuators. They developed a new switch now, so they no longer need them. Um, effectively, it's one of these. So we've got, this is a two pole 23 way. Um, it's a Bloor Edwards switch. Uh, we also have the mono version, which is a one pole 23 way. Um, so we're going to be launching a glass house step attenuator kit using Tatman metal and Tatman carbon quarter watt. So you choose which one you want. The carbon one will have more of a kind of a laid back sound. Um, whereas the metal one will be a bit kind of crisper. Um, I prefer the carbon, but I'm a valve guy and I like, I don't want it music, you know, too, too much in your face. Um, so we're going to start with doing, uh, the, the layer closest to the chassis of the actual switch. So this one here. So to add an outline, a shunt stepped attenuator is probably the kind of lowest cost version of a stepped attenuator purely because mm. you're only using one wafer per channel. Um, it, we sell so many more of this version of stepped attenuator than the ladder or the series one. Um, so just to go through, you have your signal input comes through the top and then it hits the series load resistor here. So this would be 10K, 20K, 50K, 100K, 250K. Depends on what, say if you're replacing 100K alps, you will use 100K resistor. Um, so signal comes through here. Um, the output is taken on the other side and then this that's attached to the contact here. And then it goes through all the different resistors in the the shunt resistors is what they're, what they're called. So all of those, there's 23 steps to this. First step is just um, shorted, so it's just a piece of wire like that. But the last step is open circuit, so there's nothing there. With this switch, you'll find that the torque's quite high, so I can't actually move that with my hand. So I'll just put a knob, knob on it, tighten it up, and then, yeah. Pretty easy to move. So you know where you are when you're doing the soldering. Turn it down, lowest volume setting there. Turn it around. You can see the contact here. This one is step one. And as you turn it up, step two, step three. So take it down to step one. This one here that connects to the ring is your, your output. So we effectively going that way around to fit the resistors. If you get confused, just have a look. Turn it down to the volume and volume and turn it up. You can see it quite clearly. So when you buy the kit, you will get several bags, 23 bag or 22 bags, and they'll be labeled. The only first one will be step two, which will have the first resistor, step three, four, five, six, and then you'll have another bag, which will be the load resistor, which will be this one. Here. I always like to put sort of the contact nearest the, the bar there, which is the red. They all have that red bar. Push them through all the way to both sides, just to keep them secure. I do one side, side at a time. So I've done one channel now, one wafer's done, well, one half of one wafer. So now you have to connect all the shunt, spare lead, the free leaded of the shunt to earth. Yeah, so for the connection, I'm using a copper wire from Jupiter. This is a copper wire from Jupiter. It's the AWG 23. It's just easy to take to de-sleeve it. Because most of it will be de-sleeved. So there you go. Um, the first step, which is this one, is your earth. So 
get that soldered in. With regards to solder, we're using Mundorf's 3.8% silver gold, my favourite solder to use. Set. Oh. Um. Hey. Got uh, you're supposed to got solder resistors in. Okay, so that wire's connected. We're just going to solder up all the resistor leads to the to the contacts. I generally just push down there, lift lift it up a bit, and then put the solder tip against the contact and the wire, so it's touching both. Because you've got to heat both in order to. Get a join. Soldering is so important. You've got, you can see all my joints are pretty wet, which is what you want. It just shows that you've got the right temperature iron and it won't give you a dry joint two years down the line. Snip, snip. Cut off the, the wires. Now we're going to connect the earth wire to all the lead outs, the other lead outs of the resistor. So I generally just do, just do a couple just to hold it in place, solder them in, then I'll do the rest. So that one, that one, this one, and the last one. With the last one, make sure you're not touching this metal here because it's part of the air. Just to keep them separate, solder them in. And then just do the rest. do the other sets of resistors here. So I've now fitted all the shunt resistors there in place. Um, the last thing to do on this one channel is the load resistor, series resistor. 51k this, this time because I've built with using a 51K array of resistors for the, for the, sh the shunt ones. If, if you do a 10K, 10K resistor group is different to a 20K. So they're all different. You can't just change, swap and change. So this is the 50K set. So the connection for your signal, input and output is this one here. Yeah. So this one is step 23, which is, a basically open circuit, so you get maximum output. So that one is the signal in and out. I'll just explain what the connections are in a minute. Let me just fit it, solder it in. Cool, that's it. works. The earth, signal in going down to the load resistor, signal out, feeding directly off the switch. At this point I like to do a test just to make sure values are good. 
Use a multimeter, DC resistance setting. Switch it on. Here's my list of resistors. You can get this off the, off the website, it's all there. Here is my display, obviously my multimeter. So you connect one end to your output and one end to Earth. So first step, going round, 15R, yep, 27R, 56R, 110R, you have to change the range, 200R, 360R, 560R, 9, 10, 1K3, 1K8, brilliant. Change the range, 2K7, 3K9, 5K6, 8K2, 12K, 16K. Next range, 24K, 33K, 51K, 82K, 180K, and then infinity, because it's not connected to anything. That's brilliant. So, now what I do is, I do the other channel, um, which I'll do now. So same, same process for the other channel. You have to, you start with your step two. Now the resistors aren't gonna go that way, they're gonna go that way, just to keep them flat. So red band going into the contact there. I'm gonna just go around. Um, there's the earth wire, going to go all the way around, pop that in, solder it in. So I've bent a few of the wires around, I'm going to do the rest now. So I've done one side of the, the second wafer, so I'm now going to do the other side. Fitting the resistors. That's done. So to show you on this one, the actual connections on the other channel. Earth, signal in, signal out. We're gonna do a check with a nut, both multimeters now. These are the same meters, but just be aware that they're not calibrated, not overly accurate. These resistors are 2% tolerance as well, so just be aware of that. The metal uh, version of 1%. So, as before, earth and signal out, earth and signal out. So you can see, set it right down. Lower setting. Uh, as you go through, 15R, 27R. See they're both similar. 26R, 110R, 200R. Change the range. As you're going up, all good. If there was an issue, say one of these might be 
like open circuit, which generally would mean you'd have to find that connection on the SEPTA attenuator, you would have probably not soldered it either end, either to the switch or to the actual earth bar. So that, that's just the common mistake. It's going up nicely. Change the range. Yeah, all good. And last one, open circuit. So that's what you see if you've got a short fault inside on the, on the other steps. And then last thing, you might as well just check the resistance of your load. Resistor, which we've used 51K in this case. There you go, all good. So this is ready to play. Um, I'm actually gonna wire one in and we're gonna set it up. So when you're doing an upgrade in Hi-Fi, one of the first things you do do is change the volume pot. Um, volume pots are getting harder to actually source the really good quality ones. So the stepped attenuator is brilliant as an alternative. And because we've got such a good price on these switches, we um, this will be a great price. Um, 23 steps, you might think, oh, is that enough for me to have full control of my high five? We have sold thousands set with a similar one, 2 dB step, and it's we've never had any issues. Um, so, worth getting one of these guys.